how long have you had your your wood miser? You've got the same thing, right? Exactly, you got exactly the same. Sure. So how long have you had it? About two years. And you cut all the time. I I, I could stay busy full time with it if I if I had the logs to do it with. I have enough demand that I, I could stay sawn full time with. It. But you're saying the demand is for the longer logs? Uh, not all of it, but the, a lot of it is. They're, they're, they're specially cuts like like I have a, a customer that that I set that does all pole barn buildings. Yep. That he does double trusses together and, and he has to have those uh, a board cut that matches his his the width treated the six by sixes. Oh. So that he has to have exactly the right width in there so those, those trusses slide down over top of that six by six. Right. So custom cuts. Mm -hmm. Custom cuts and, and, and long uh, beams. So I, I have I have three boxes of blades and I haven't changed the first one yet. Okay. I've, I've been really impressed with them. I have a sharpener, but I don't have it set up yet. Well, Make I, sure you keep water in your in your thing and keep your water on it when you run it. Because yeah. if you don't, it gets hot and where they weld that band blade together, uh -huh. they'll it, separate on you. Really? Well, I've been running water and, and keeping the water on it just to keep it cool. I thought it was to lubricate the cut, but you're saying it's to keep the blade cool. Yes. I, I had my son watch run it and they didn't keep the, the jug full of water and it ran out and, and where they weld this band together, yep. it separate, it gets hot and it comes right apart in the middle. Hmm. Well, I, that's, that's, I've always kept the water on it because it seemed to cut better when I ran the water. Mm, but but that, keeping it cool, that makes sense. What do you think about um, like a planer head? Do you see any value in that? Have you thought, have you had demand for it with if people you, that you're cutting you, for? If you drag your, your uh, logs to very much dirt, yeah. It dulls your blade really fast, and so they have that little pla that little planer on on the that goes with the, with a mill that cuts the bark and, I've and seen cleans that, that ahead. Of, of yeah, that. I'm not sure it's available for our models. But I I haven't seen it for this. I was thinking that the one that's on the the rollers like this, that's an actual planer head that rolls back and forth, so you can really smooth your your timbers up, so you don't get the rough cut. I've never tried any of those. I, I have a 16 inch regular commercial planer that, that oh so you cut your boards and then so, so i can just run them through right to, to plane them it'll cut it it'll plane any of these big timbers you've got here it yeah. will plane those but I, I most of the people are asking for the rough cut they like the rough cut and so i don't know that that makes any sense i mean i'm not building cabinets or I, furniture I, I, occasionally for that for the real finished insides look some of them like to have it planed but but the majority like this little rough look yeah well, I, it's been such a good little sawmill, and and it's I, I, I just see just years and years of continuous use out of it. They work really well. The only thing is sometimes as you, as you, as you use it a lot, you, you'll wish you had a log roller, which the bigger models have got that so I, automatic roller I on do it. have a log roller. <laughs> it's right over here. If, if uh, that, that rolls the logs really, really nice. <laughs> That's what I use at my mill. Yeah, but, just but, use but, the tractor and set but, them up there. But at times it'd be nice just to grab the lever and go like this and have it roll over. Just <laughs> turn, it, turn it over. <laughs> Instead of get off and start the loader and, and move it. Anything negative to say about the this machine? The frustrations? Mark, frustrations that you have? I really haven't had any because I, I, before I bought mine I researched it really heavy and I only had two choices and the wood miser was, was one of those choices and it was, it was my, actually it was my preferred choice and, and when I found one this model yeah at, at a good price I, I just jumped on it set. and it has a diesel motor in it and it has oh the, you got that see I'm running gas and you got diesel uh, I I would I would prefer that especially where we've got so much diesel equipment around here but but the gas motor seems to run they're, they're just enough, fine yes. mm -hmm. what uh, what did you end up having to pay for yours we paid six thousand for ours yeah that's that's our smoking deal for a diesel motor we had to smoking go clear in, in the up in the upper end of Montana to get it but but it was a, really a smoking deal, and it has a 25-foot cut on it. Oh, see, and I'm, on, I'm 18, so you got it, a track extension plus a diesel motor. I, I have two more tracks. Dang it, why do you always, you always get the good deals? <laughs> yeah, I would like, I would like to be able to go to 25, because then you could comfortably cut 20 or 21, mm -hmm. which would let you cut timbers to 20 or whatever. 20 and 24 are real popular. Where yeah. do you get most of your lumber? Where are you getting your trees? I have a... I cheat because we have 520 acres of, of virgin forest that my grandfather bought. When so, he had you're, sheep. so, so you're getting your off so, your own land. So I get mine off our own land. But, but Again, I, you always get the good deals. That's, that's the basic reason why I bought my mill is because I, we had a lot of trees. And I was hiring sod. Yeah. And and so I just 
but it's in a family trust and, and at any time that could go so i don't know I, i've been trying to call by other avenues of, of trying to find different wood ways. my only the only way i'm getting it is is doing construction projects on these cabins and then they ask us to trees to the to clear the lot and mm. then i get to bring the trees home and we've got i've got quite a few pretty good pile there. yeah but i think if i got serious about cutting i would i'd burn through that pile pretty quick they there's guys that bring them in by the by the semi load so I can I, get them i've been talking to to wilmore mm -hmm. down there in saint anthony wilmore lumber wilmore is the sawmill down there uh -huh. and they've got some contracts with forest service and i was going to get with them and say guys what would it cost to deliver me a truckload there's some guys that, that deliver firewood that brings it up out of southern utah that does it cheaper and you probably can get a better deal with them guys than you can no with. kidding even from these guys that are working right across the street mm -hmm. Holy they, cow. Because Wilmore's have their own sawmill and they and they don't want to uh, like the competition. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, well, those, so you're, you're going to pay premium for their logs. Right. But, uh, well, we'll have to get with you and see who those guys out of Southern Utah are. Uh, what are you finding? Are you charging? Is it just board foot? Are you, and what are you charging a board foot? I, I charge by the board foot, but mostly what I've done for, com uh, for for commercial sawing is I, they bring their own logs in and I just have just sawed their logs. Right. So I, they, they pay me by a, a, a board oh, foot. But it's just a cut price because they're providing the lumber. They, they provide their own logs and I just So I just give, give me a comparison. If 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 I bring you a tree, what do you charge a board foot? And then if, if you supply the, the lumber, the trees, what's the board foot cost? Usually when I supply the tree, I, I, I call BMC and ask him what it would cost for that, that, that same log. Yep. And then I give him a little less. So kind of going MP. rate minus a percentage. Right. Well, so, for, for me living, you know, down in the flatlands, um, five minutes from Home Depot, buy, buying a sawmill made absolutely no sense because I could go to Home Depot and buy lumber cheaper than I could produce it. Mm -hmm. But out here in this environment, having access to the trees and it being so far from another you know, lumber source where I can get boards. Uh, this thing is pays just keeps paying for itself over and over again, saving me the travel and and the time, and giving me the convenience to make those custom cuts, like you said, to to for whatever I might need here on projects around the house. Also, you're going to see an increase in lumber prices because the, the the president of the United States just got in a big fight with with Canada over the embargo they put on milk, and so he put an embargo on their lumber where we get the majority of our lumber is comes Canada. out of Canada. Well, I've noticed it as I've been bidding houses and cabins for this summer that I had $12 a sheet for four by eight half inch OSB panels and they're up around $15 now. And it's mm. it's killing me. I'm having to go back to owners and say, uh, uh, I need to change my bid. Mm. Having that sawmill and being able to come on boards is, is is making me a lot of money. More than anything, it's it's the convenience of having what I need when I need it, where I'm in a situation that's going to cost me two hours to go somewhere and get something. The, the, the convenience for me was that we did a lot of log homes. Yeah. And so I was always hauling a log somewhere to try to get a, a custom a cut to a certain custom side to fit into a certain spot. Yeah. Either flattened on one side or flattened on the other side. And I always was on my wish list for a long time to, to yeah, have my own that I could just be able to go in and, and do it and, and take it back to the job. Yeah, if you want to watch, so if you, like you, you can cut like if you if you need some two by sixes. Yeah. Then you can you can cut here and then bring this to five and a half inches, and then cut your five and a half inch pieces off by having and uh, say this piece as a three by twelve or a two by twelve. Your heavy demand is in, in two by eights, two by sixes, and two by fours. Okay. So four, six, eight. Mm -hmm. That's where you. you that's and why is I that the, is it when you say are we going full dimensional like in a full two inches or we're actually dimensional lumber inch and a half by three and a half inches i cut them inch and a half by three and a half and, and replace that a regular stud with with my, my cut because they're accurate enough that i don't have to plane them i can still build so slow down be smooth well my i've been cutting everything to a full two inches by four inches or two inches by full six inches and my thought was that i could re-saw that or replane it to whatever but it, if but, you need to you can but if you start getting you're only cutting a half inch off of here then it's pretty easy to get it not, to, not to, flat to out. so i think you just make the a specific cut for the specific board that you need and i found that it's that it's most people don't even notice that that's not a plain board when i 
cut them at dimensional size. Yeah, they and, can't and, even and tell the difference. As long as you got a sharp blade and mm -hmm. you're nice and smooth. People have never have noticed that that's rough sod lump. Yeah, so as you built those shops and those buildings, my concern has always been the twist that you get as some of this this stuff that's not kiln dried mm -hmm. maybe dries a little bit. What do you do or what, how do you bring it together to minimize some as, of that? As you cut that uh -huh. and saw it when it's green, you need to, to, to do like you've done here and put a sticker under it. Yeah, so it can air and, all and the way then, around and it. And then band it. Oh. Then it'll hold. Okay, so that it's in the pile, it doesn't so if you, cup or you, twist. If you stick it, then it's banded, then as it dries, then it stays straight. I'm wider than that, but I, that's all wider I can run through. But this, this but edge leave, here. Leave that live edge. Yep, with the live edge on it, and, the, and the, then the, you, you go in through that and, and belt sand that off smooth. Yeah. And put a, a, a resin on top of that. Oops. That would look really pretty. And, and these knots and, and the things that's in that puts, makes a character to that. And it, the resin just fills in there and makes it smooth. And you need to make them just a little wider, the full two inches. Okay. Just for countertops, go thicker. It helps keep from, the, from your from your warping so much. Yeah, for the cupping that we're getting.